And this was a, an interesting article about from JP Morgan. Let me zoom in a little bit, which is talking about, actually, in fact, I've got the uh, article here, right? So I'll zoom in a bit and it says, uh, heading into New Year, sees uh, Morgan Stanley's economist. And, and in fact, the headline, again, is, is a bit, you know, again, misleading. This is the reason why you kind of have to read the whole article. A 2023 market surprise, pound sterling enters a bull market against the euro and the dollar, right? So it's asking a question, right? Potentially, it says we think a bullish scenario for the UK and its currency could come as a surprise to many in 2023, and it would, right? That's that's a fact because the the consensus is that the um is that the uh, the pound should actually head lower. And I'm just going to read, you know, a couple of paragraphs. So it talks about heading into the new year. sees Morgan Stanley's economists aligned with the consensus that expect in expecting sorry the uk economy to suffer a torrid 2023 so that's the consensus right this is what i've been saying um you know even though price has been doing something different and we'll get onto that in a sec because it does mention um you know price um further down um and indeed they expect uk growth to be the worst among the g10 and even amongst emerging markets so that's tells you how bad things are look at the chart right uh the uk eurozone sweden look at that terrible australia actually looking to grow quite a bit in the us as well switzerland um so the bar is therefore set incredibly low for an upside growth surprise that would challenge consensus and offer sterling a supportive domestic narrative, right? So basically all that's saying is that if, you know, there are, there's the data comes out and it surprises to the upside, yeah, if GDP data comes out and, you know, let's say, for example, there's a, you know, a, a, a everyone's expecting contraction and all of a sudden, you know, they may be flatline or even this positive growth, then that is going to not only support the pound, but it's going to massively support the pound. But there's a difference between between um, you know predictions and forecasts, right? Nobody knows. You know, prediction predictions is 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 you know borderline certainty. I predict that the pound is going to go here. You know, and certain you, you don't want to deal with predictions and certainty because nothing's certain. So forecasts and go with the consensus, especially when you're talking about banks, when you're talking about retail traders, you know, retail traders, you want to kind of do the opposite to what retail do typically. I'm not saying that retail are never right, just like the banks are always never right either. But at the same time, um, you always typically want to go with consensus. And it's just telling you that, you know, if you didn't read the head, if you only read the headline and you thought to yourself, well, you know, buying the pound, you know, and the pound sterling enters a bull market against the euro and the dollar, that would make it seem like, you know, you want to be a contrarian. But in fact, when you read the actual article, you know, it's not saying that at all. It's just saying um, that, you know, there is the potential for a surprise. Um, yeah, it says the bar is therefore set incredibly low for an upside growth uh, surprise that would challenge consensus and offer sterling a supportive domestic narrative. A bearish outlook for the UK has pretty much been a consensus for the past few months, right? So anyone who's been had had that bias like myself, not wrong, right? You, 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 you're in good, we're in good company, right? We're in good company with Morgan Stanley um and uh remains so even as even as the pound has staged an impressive rally against the dollar in recent in recent weeks says wanting low g10 fx strategist at morgan stanley and uh this is the, the i guess the sentence uh which it says but morgan stanley strategy team thinks this rally was driven by a combination of positioning adjustment and a broad weakening of the dollar rather than a change in the fundamental view right you know and uh that is a massive you know statement this is really important but i'm going to get onto this uh when we talk about pullbacks right pullbacks and the question was, uh, you know, how deep does price need to pull back before you change your directional bias, right? And I'm going to, you know, I want to refer to this as well, right? So keep this in mind, uh, that, that, that sentence. And the last really thing is just this, is driving expectations for the UK economic underperformance are expectations for an ongoing energy crisis to crimp growth and ensure inflation remains elevated, right? And again, I spoke about this last week. Please go back to last week's, you know, uh, talk, right? Go back to last week's talk because 
in last week's talk, I said that what is the lesser of two evils? Yeah, I'm just going to summarize it. The lesser of two evils, what would you rather buy into? A country that has high inflation, right? Rising inflation, uh, where, where inflation is still elevated, yeah? Actually, let me uh, put this on the put this on the board and you can go back to last week's one right but question was would you rather high inflation yeah and uh meaning that the central bank is hiking but that's going to cause a contraction and recession right it's fast forwarding the recession bringing forward the recession potentially because they're hiking rates still yeah would you rather do that remember this is typically positive for a currency if this is uh, interest rates right this is in high inflation right high inflation okay right and this normally is not right so gdp contracting is typically not yeah or right so that's scenario a right or country a or would you rather go with country b right where inflation is falling yeah, so inflation is coming down, is lower, right? Maybe this are just doing, you know, a trending higher or just, you know, flatlining. Or in this one is going lower, right? Inflation is going lower, right? Interest rates, you know, are now, you know, being, you know, reduced and held. Yeah, so, uh, you know, let's do that as a just a, a hold, right? And that's, you know, interest rates. But GDP, yeah, potentially could actually and i'm not saying it will grow but it you know it's it may avoid a recession potentially um uh in the future or at least lag behind you know a when it comes to you know gdp yeah which one are you you know are you likely to want to buy and i'm going to ask that now i'm going to ask that to everyone now Keeping in mind, keeping in mind that the market is tends to be for and I say tends to be, but usually is forward thinking, right? It's thinking six months, nine months into the future. Yeah. HP user, trading MK, John says B. That's exactly it. In the short term, it looks like, right? It looks like there's a divergence in interest rates, right? And there is, right? One is hiking and one is, you know, holding or reducing their rates, right? That is a divergence, but you also have the GDP potential divergence as well, right? And what we do know for sure, oh, it's Spank. Oh, okay, how you doing? Yeah, Spank, right? And, and, and what you have, right? At some point, the narrative is going to change. And again, I was talking about this last week, yeah, it's going to change the GDP. Eventually, inflation is going to come down. If it went up globally, right? If it's gonna, it's going up globally, and everyone else is, and everyone is suffering from high inflation. Yeah, brilliant, cool. Everyone has to hike, which is what everyone did. But, but when inflation comes down, right, and if inflation comes down, it should come down, and it's, it's showing signs that it is. Yeah, then the euro are going to be in the same. Then 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 the pound are going to be in the same place, and the UK are going to be in the same place when it comes to interest rate hikes because they don't have to hike as much, right? They're going to be holding right rates, and so are Europe, and so are everyone else because Canada's doing that, right? Canada's doing it. Um, Australia's doing it, right? They're not hiking as as aggressively as you know the the UK and or the um, or the European Central Bank, right? So then if all banks start to hold and, you know, uh, start to ease up, right, then what becomes the divergence? The next narrative becomes GDP, right? And who is likely to avoid a recession and who isn't, right? Who's likely to go into a recession first and who isn't? That becomes then the narrative because it becomes growth. And, you know, international investors don't want to invest in somewhere that is not growing yeah then it becomes again the dog with the least fleas and you start to look towards gdp as the marker of you know potential currency strength that is the game plan that has to be the game plan and um and again this is all you know here right so i uh where is it now right so this was 
this was oh this is ecb one sorry right but this this basically lends we're talking about the pound but the analysis is still saying this is from ing right so it talks about you know the, the ecb expects only a short and shallow recession forecasting eurozone growth to come in at 0.5 in 2023 and 1.9 in 2024 this is much more optimistic than our own growth forecast which basically means that they don't think that you know that's going to grow that much right and here it says needless to say that with still relatively optimistic outlook the risk increases that the ecb pushes the eurozone economy further into recession uh, into recession with every new rate hike yeah that sentence yeah remember for those of you who attended the um webinar or who watched the webinar video i'll put it out on youtube now um so you can watch it on youtube if you haven't um uh, watched it right but this slide right i said that interest rate hikes yeah typically currency appreciation but if you do it too much it leads to economic slowdown and contraction and the more you do it yeah is the more you're going to go into oh where's the uh here it is right you're going to go in you're pushing your economy like replace ecb with any other current country that would be in the same place but you're pushing your economy further into a recession with every new rate hike 